Wait a second, did these guys do something with their hair? I'm Ashley with Watch Mojo, and these are the top 10 greatest anime redesigns. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're going to be looking at the sequel series and spin-offs that drastically change the designs of the characters, mostly for the better. Number 10, Lupin the Third, the woman called Fujiko Mine. The world's greatest thief has had many incarnations over the years, with even the great Hayao Miyazaki having his shot at reinventing the tone. You ran away? I was just a kid. I got all mixed up. However, if you're looking for a Lupin that's saturated in the neon noir genre and unafraid to show some skin, Fujiko Mine is the way to go. So the cult leader's beautiful bride is really a thief. What an unexpected turn of events. Focusing on the titular femme fatale, this retelling of how these iconic characters first joined forces is a marvel to look at. Fujiko's talents as a seductress are laid bare, culminating in scenes that are borderline surreal in their beauty. No wonder Lupin's got the hearts for her. Agony and ecstasy. Two things that everybody feels at some point in their life. Number 9. Megalo Box as a spiritual successor to the legendary Tomorrow's Joe, this boxing anime combines old-school visuals with a more modern flair. While it's still telling its own story with a brand new protagonist in the form of Junk Dog, you can see all the little homages to the classic series in some of the new character designs. Sure, you now have fighters with robot ligaments strapped to them, but you can still feel Joe's enduring spirits with every punch thrown. Number 8, Sailor Moon Crystal. While the original will forever hold a place inside our magical girl-loving hearts, there's no debating that the Sailor Senshi were in dire need of a fresh coat of paint. Thankfully, Crystal gave us just that, with a few extra sparkles thrown in for good measure. Free of filler and any kind of kooky animation, this spiritual successor was the perfect palette cleanser, leaving us giddy to see everyone's favorite mini skirt wearing princess superhero once again leap into the fray. Still can't get over the fact we can see through Tuxedo Mask's mask. Tuxedo? Smoking Bomba! Number 7, Kashurn Sins. Another 70s classic given a modern makeover, the original Kashurn was an action packed romp that saw a humanoid android take up the mission to destroy the deadly robots that have all but dominated the world. <laughs> With a plot like that, a dark and gritty reimagining was all but guaranteed, with the outcome being pretty darn successful. With fluid fight scenes, slick animation, and a protagonist that managed to maintain an engrossing apathy towards his own robotic race, there's nothing sinful about this series. Number 6, Jijiji no Kitaro. Back when this series first started up in the 60s, it was nothing more than a black and white show about the endearing misadventures of a ghost boy as he encountered all manner of creature from Japanese mythology. Half a century later, Kintaro is pretty much doing the same thing, only now in Technicolor, with modern designs and a much more cute and Neko Masume. Number 5. 
Turns out modern day life suits Kintaro very well, with the upgraded visuals allowing for far more scares to sneak on through. Number 5 Beyblade G Revolution Did the blade breakers all go under the knife? This isn't so much a redesign as an artistic whiplash. After roaming the globe looking like pudgy balls of Play-Doh, the boys finally got the makeover they desperately needed for their third season. Don't let him suck you in with his little tricks. Stick to your game plan. Just do it. Just stick to my, my game plan. Not only were the majority of them finally looking like actual teenagers, but the show really started throwing money at the wall when it came to actual Beyblading. The CGI made the spinning tops look downright lethal at times, while the bit beasts were finally given some actual design to them. You know, as opposed to looking like giant glow sticks. Number 4 Space Battleship Yamato 2199 The original Space Battleship Yamato is credited for being one of the major influences behind both Neon Genesis Evangelion and Super Dimension Fortress Macross, and it's not hard to see why. <laughs> A warship that sails through the cosmos blasting apart aliens? That's practically the blueprint for every great sci-fi epic ever. A remake was always going to be a tricky thing to handle due to its legacy, but from an aesthetic point of view, the Yamato has never looked more breathtaking. At least now it looks big enough to house all those hundreds of galactic pretty boys. Number 3 Dororo The works of Osamu Tezuka are precious in the world of anime, with pieces like Astro Boy and Kimba the White Lion still resonating with audiences today. So to bring one of his legendary series like Dororo into a modern framework is quite honestly a daunting task, but nonetheless one that Studio Mappa took head on and absolutely nailed. <laughs> Though not straying too far from the roots of this samurai and demon slaying epic, Mappa's reimagining throws in a heaping helping of 2019 grit and edge, with Hyakimaru transformed into a limbless, skinless, badass Bishonen, and little Doro being the cutest little ragamuffin around. No, I'd say we can trust Mappa with our reboots from now on. Ah, Nechan no Tomurai ga senda! Number 2 Devilman Crybaby Whereas its numerous predecessors were famous for their sharp character models, savage fight scenes, and unapologetic approach to the ugly side of humanity, Masaki Yuasa's turn in the demonic driver's seat gave us something that was akin to a hyper-stylized fever dream. Don't get us wrong, it can be downright gore lore at times, and the upsetting narrative points still hit home, but you can clearly tell this particular devil man was made in mind for the modern masses. Wild sex scenes, Japanese rapping, and crazy color palettes included. <laughs> Number 1 Mr. Osumatsu you could say that pretty much everything matured with this sequel series. The characters, the art style, and most certainly the sense of humor. <laughs> While Osamatsu can portray the Matsuno siblings as mischievous yet overall harmless little tykes, things got a hell of a lot crasser when the boys hit puberty. 
Their parody sketches, devious activities, and blaring innuendos are near endless, only matched by their ability to make life miserable for each other. Thankfully, they've been given beautifully crisp animation, so every embarrassing moment can be captured. So which of these redesigns do you like the most? Let us know in the comments, maybe check out one of these other videos, and subscribe to watch Mojo.